If you find yourself with a camera in your hand and want to learn how to use it, please subscribe to this channel, like the videos, comment below. Hi Photos family. Um, I say overexposing because I'm thinking about the smoke trail from um, lighting off the fireworks. The smoke from the propulsion upward, the explosion of the firework in the air, there's, there's a lot of smoke just naturally involved in a show like this. So there was some distortion in the shot that I just recently had. Um, it wasn't just one image, I don't mean to, it, the shoot, which I recently had. Uh, I actually took more than 150 images, I believe. So the shoot itself is important to get the settings of your camera correct so that you actually get everything in detail, focus, brightness, the contrast that you're looking for, so that you get a, a beautiful firework contrasted against the dark sky of the nighttime. So um, I, I've kind of rambled on here for almost 10 minutes and I hope some of that has, has just my excitement and talking about the details of how I shoot uh, for the shutter length is important. Uh, the lens aperture, you need to stop that down to the point where you can control exposure a little bit with aperture, but that's really not the point of aperture. The more important control of exposure would be your ISO setting. And I had to shoot between, I want to say my my ISO rating was 3,600 to 4,000 or 5,000. Uh, the age of my camera, if I pushed any further than that, I believe it told me it was either 6,000 or the highest ISO setting possible for what that camera allowed. So uh, I was shooting right on the edge. And my whole desire for shooting that high for ISO was just so that I could get a decent exposure. And bringing the images back, it seems that this sensor of my camera is good enough quality that there's not a lot of grainy look to it. But there also um, is some flexibility there getting the shot within color range and exposure range that I can take that raw data and either brighten it up a little bit or maybe tone down some of the highlights, but not a lot. So it's easier to pull the exposure from a photograph if it's slightly dark to making it a little bit brighter rather than taking something too bright and trying to make it darker. Uh, that's a general rule for photography as a whole, but for photographs of fireworks, it's especially important because the brighter you try and make it, the more risk you have of running into grain from a high ISO setting. But the other issue is that you have um, some real difficulties with trying to make the bright darker that there's color washed out and you will never regain that color. So there's more at risk of trying to make a bright photograph darker than there is making a slightly dark photograph a little bit brighter. I hope these things have helped uh, in my discussion of, of the aperture I was shooting at. If you have a newer camera that goes up even higher, say 32,000, uh, rating for ISO, then you're going to have a little bit more additional help there with your heart from your hardware. Um, I have an uh, old first generation 7D Canon. I said that a little bit fast. The Canon 7D is what I used to image those fireworks. I could only go up so high because the camera hardware only allowed so much flexibility with the ISO setting at that point. Controls there for ISO aperture. I gave there the aperture. I stopped aperture down from between five and 4.5 to 4. The lens I was using was a 75 to 300 telephoto lens. And so there wasn't a whole lot of uh, capability being able to open up more than a 4.0 aperture. But I really didn't need to open up much more than that. Uh, I also didn't want to narrow my focus down too much, whether I was closer to the fireworks show or further away because I wanted to be able to just open my shutter and actuate an image without having to worry too much about 
whether the firework was in focus or not. The detail of a photograph of a firework to me is important. Having most of it in focus is nice and a little bit of fall off on focus is interesting, but that's hard to control in the moment when you're trying to just get a picture. So that's why I set up generally between a half mile and a mile and a half from a firework display if I can at all possibly do so. That was about optimal for the lens uh, length that I had, the 75 to 300, because I could open the zoom of that uh, lens from the more telephoto of it down to about 75 um, millimeters and be able to capture the whole display within that focal plane, the um, focal angle. And I didn't have to zoom in or zoom out. I could just keep it there at about 75 and actuate the shutter when I was ready to take a picture. And um, once I got everything figured out as to how far and near the fireworks were to be able to dial in the focus and uh, get nearly the, the quote unquote infinite focal distance uh, so that most everything in the foreground looked in uh, focus and everything in the background looked in focus so that everything else was just sharper until it hit that focal plane exactly and then everything closer was um, just generally either invisible or, or looked okay, that it wasn't drawing attention away. So the important details of all of these things is that you need to find out what your camera works with best so that you don't have the grainy ISO, uh, that you have the ability to stop your motion with your shutter speed, and that your aperture f-stop rating is not so narrowed down that your focal plane is too narrow. That's the reason for my rambling here. Thank you so much for watching. Like the com, uh, like the comment, yeah. <whistles> like the video, comment down below if you found something of interest and subscribe to join our Photos family. Thank you so much for watching, God bless.